Hello and welcome to this video tutorial for the Black Box by 1010 Music. In this video, I will demonstrate some of the features of sample modes. Use a sample pad when you want to play a sample with no slicing and no synchronization within the playback. You can also use a sample pad when you have a bank or collection of samples you'd like to map across a keyboard. I'll discuss sample mode in this video and cover multi-samples in a future video. A sample loaded into a pad supports forward and reverse playback, along with forward and bi-directional looping. You can also use the start and length parameters to play only a portion of a WAV file. If you look at the black box here, you can see that the bottom row contains three samples. A snare, a closed hi-hat, and an open hi-hat. The first thing to do is to load a kick drum sample into the first or lower left pad. I'll start by selecting this pad by either touching the pad or by using the knobs to select it. If you use the upper left or upper right knob, you can see that you can scroll through the pads to select them horizontally. If you use the lower left knob, you can scroll through the pads vertically. This is convenient because you can select a pad without actually touching it. The lower right knob is used for something else, and I'll discuss that in just a moment. To get started, I'll load this kick drum sample by pressing the info button once, and that takes me to the recording and load screen. I'll tap on load, and you'll notice that Blackbox takes me to the last directory I was looking at on the micro SD card. You can see the play button at the top of the screen is activated. So anytime I scroll through a list, like this one, I can audition these samples without needing an external controller backing out to the main screen. To load this WAV file, I'm going to tap Load, and the next thing we see is the waveform screen. This screen contains a lot of important information. In the upper left corner, I have a grid. This grid is called the Selection Grid. The Selection Grid is a shortcut that allows me to quickly switch between pads without backing out to the main screen and then drilling back into the various editing screens. To the right of the selection grid is a visual representation of a waveform. This menu is where I can select which sample mode I want to use for this pad. The options are sample, clip, slicer, granular, and the bottom option, new recording, can be selected to record audio in real time into a pad. The other nice feature of this button is that the icon will change depending on the sample mode that is currently selected. So if I change the sample mode to clip, to slicer, or even granular, the icon changes too. And this feature makes it easier to see the current sample mode at a glance. To the right of that button is another button that displays the file name of the WAV file that is currently loaded. In this case, it is still kick1.wav. If you want to change the WAV file, you can tap that menu and go back into the last directory you were browsing. Blackbox also gives us buttons to go up a directory or browse the WAV files on the micro SD card. So if I tap that button, I come back to the last directory I just looked at. If I want to go up a directory, I can tap this up arrow to go back down in a directory. I'm going to tap load and use one of the knobs to scroll through the sounds, find my sample, and tap load. On the far right of that upper bar is the play button. This button allows you to audition the WAV file again without the need to remove your hands from the black box or reach out to an external controller. Under that bar, you can see a white version of the waveform, the waveform overview. It's encased in a blue box. That blue box will always display the portion of the waveform that is in the main waveform view in the bottom of this screen. So you can push or pull this section to zoom in or zoom out of the waveform. And right now, whatever is located in the main waveform view is represented inside of that blue box. Finally, the bottom portion of this screen displays the actual WAV file that is currently loaded into this pad. You might notice the two purple flags, one on the far left, one on the far right. These are the start and length markers I mentioned, and I'll discuss these in just a moment. From the waveform screen, 
I will press the info button once to bring up the parameters for this pad. The parameters for every pad include the selection grid, the output menu, use this menu to choose the specific output assignment for this pad. The black box has three stereo outputs to choose from. By selecting out one, this pad will be output to both the left and right channels of output one. If you only want output one left or output one right, you can select that in this menu. The next menu is for polyphony. This is where you can select between monophonic or polyphonic playback for this pad. On the far right of the top bar is a button with the name of the currently loaded WAV file that can be used to audition this WAV file while changing parameters without reaching to an external controller or backing out to the main screen. The middle portion of this screen contains the main parameters for this pad. These parameters include level, pitch, filter, and launch mode. Use the corresponding knob to change each parameter. The level parameter allows you to change the overall level of a pad. Use the upper right knob to adjust the pitch of this waveform. You can pitch a wave up or down two octaves so you have a full four octave spread. The filter control is unique because this one parameter can apply a low pass or high pass filter. When you turn the lower left knob to the left and you see negative numbers, you're applying a low pass filter. Turn this knob to the right, you see positive numbers, you're applying a high pass filter. At zero, no filter is applied. The lower right parameter is where you select the launch mode for this pad. We give you three to choose from. Trigger, Gate, and Toggle. Trigger mode will start a sample and play through to the end. This mode is great for one-shot samples like drums. Gate mode will only play a wave as long as your finger is touching the pad or a key is held on a controller. When you let up, the sound will stop. Toggle mode acts like a switch. You touch once to start the sample. The sample will loop if loop is enabled. You touch again to stop the sample. I'll press the pads button to return to the main screen to demonstrate. The lower row of samples in this screen are all drum samples and all set to trigger. In the top row, the tubular bell sample is set to gate. Under that is a drum sample that is set to toggle. The next page of parameters is labeled ADSR. The black box includes a four-stage ADSR envelope for every pad. Use the four knobs to adjust the envelope parameters. So you can adjust attack, decay, sustain, and release all with the four knobs. The buttons along the top include the selection grid, the exclusive mode used for grouping pads together, and the normal high cue mode that I'll discuss in another video. Finally, that far right button will allow you to audition this pad. The miscellaneous page allows you to set the loop mode. Use the upper left knob to choose from none, forward, or bi-directional looping. To the right is the reverse control. Currently, it is off. If I audition this sample, it plays forward. If I change this parameter to the on position, the sample plays in reverse. Below reverse is the root note parameter, and I will discuss this parameter when talking about multi-samples. The next page of parameters is the position menu. This menu allows you to manually select the start and stop points of a wave. These two parameters adjust the purple flags in the waveform screen. So you can adjust them manually by turning the knobs. Or if we head back to the waveform view and you grab the top two knobs, you can adjust those purple flags here. The next two parameters allow you to manually adjust the loop start and loop end points for a wave. These two points control two white flags in the waveform screen when loop is enabled. So again, you can 
adjust those here with the knobs and go back to the waveform screen use the bottom two knobs to adjust those points Both of these controls are measured in samples. The MIDI page allows you to set the MIDI channel that this pad will respond to when you send MIDI data from an external controller via the TRS MIDI jack or the USB port on the rear panel. You can also set the MIDI channel this pad will use to send MIDI data out of the black box. The pad note parameter allows you to specify the incoming MIDI note that this pad will respond to. When set to default, the pad will respond to the note specified in the chart located in the manual. Otherwise, you can use this parameter to set the note of your choice. This makes it very easy for the black box to interface with external controllers. I'll press the pads button to return to the pad screen. The pad screen gives us tactile control over all of the pads. On the far right of the screen, you can see some familiar yet essential editing tools. Cut, copy, paste, and clear. Use these tools in conjunction with your knobs to select a pad, copy it, and then paste that pad to a different location. You can also cut a pad to remove all of the data. These editing tools are really handy and they work well between presets. So you can copy a pad from one preset and paste it to another. Finally, the lower right knob, when turned to the left, displays a velocity slider on screen. This is used to set the outgoing velocity for any of the pads. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more tutorial videos from 1010 Music.